Hello everyone and welcome to lecture 17 now of YouTube lectures. Woo! Yay! I guess. Uh, period 6, is, this is the last one we're going to cover in period 6. Um, this one is being uploaded uh, so you can watch it over the winter break if you choose. It will not be due until the Tuesday. Uh, we come back Monday the 5th, but it will be due Tuesday the 6th. So, you know, I'll be uploading also the um, video log up to Edmodo for you later on. So here we're going to look primarily at key concept 6.1. Hopefully you, you have your key concepts. Uh, a letter, a key concept, uh, sorry about that. Key concept 1, row numeral 3, letter B. We've already covered this, but just as a uh, way of a reminder and review, the Granger movement. You know, farmers had to adopt to a lot of things. They had to adopt to these new realities of uh, how they do agriculture with new uh, machines, uh, the harvester, the reaper, the combine. Uh, they are also dependent upon the railroad system. Uh, so they began to develop for themselves these regional and local organizations like the Granger to try and protect themselves. Uh, as we saw, we spoke about this one already. Um, it eventually falls apart. And I'll have a little reminder here on the slide as well. Uh, 6.1, Roman numeral 3, letter C is the, the gist of this one. The growth of corporate power in agriculture and economic instability in the farming sector is what helps to inspire individuals to come together after the failure of the Grange to create their own political party known as the People's Party but we have come to know it as the Populist Party. All right, so let's get into this and see how this happens. Well, let's go back and talk about some things we've already talked about in class. The crime of 73. Do you remember the crime of 73, everybody? I mean, I'll give you a moment to think about it. I think you do. All right, there you go. There's your moment to think about it. This is in... Um, Reference to what happens with the Panic of 1873, that economic downturn that happens. The government decides, amongst other things, to stop minting silver coins through what was known as the Coinage Act. And when that thing went out... Farmers were enraged. They were angry over this, and they called that the crime of 73. Uh, farmers like inflation, uh, inflationary monetary policy. They want to put more currency into the system. They want what we call bimetallism. They want to use silver and gold. Now look at this political cartoon here for a moment. He's riding a bicycle. One wheel is gold. One wheel is silver. Do you think this is a pro-bimetallism cartoon or anti-bimetallism cartoon? I'll let you think that for yourself for a little bit. Now, to placate farmers and also soft money advocates, uh, five years later, in 1878, a Democrat by the name of Bland and a Republican named Allison got together and created the Bland-Allison Act. Uh, they, they wanted to placate farmers and individuals who were in debt as well. There were a lot of debtors who also wanted bimetallism. And it does require Congress to start minting silver again, but at a very modest amount. This ratio 16 to 1, 16 ounces of silver will equal one ounce of gold. That's going to be something very, very important for us later on. We might want to try to remember that ratio. We'll talk about it when we come back from the break. Uh, a few years later, in 1890, the Sherman Silver Purchase Act is put in place. Um, this also, they'll start to purchase more silver and mint more silver as well, but at a very, very modest amount. Not a lot. These two acts were basically America's only really attempt at ever trying to introduce bimetallism into our system. After a while, and we'll talk about that when we come back from the break, gold is going to win out. Gold will become the currency of the day. Well, as we know, there's been a lot of issues with the railroads, with the rise of the monopoly and the corporations. We talked about the Granger movement. We talked about that in class. These two Supreme Court cases, you have the Munn versus Illinois, where the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Granger Laws of Illinois. Remember, that's where they said that if you use your private good 
for the good of the public, you should expect to be regulated. Well, then about 11 years later, the Wabash case, also out of Illinois, overturns that. And that's where they start to look at the differences of due process. They went from simply procedural process of the law to substantive, the substance of the law. And they wind up overturning the Granger laws. And in that, basically brought an end to the Granger movement. Uh, but there were a lot of these farmers who were still wanting to take on a fight. You have this Farmers Alliance that begins in 1876. There were two aspects of this, the Southern Alliance and the Northern. Now, the Southern Alliance basically wants to stay democratic. Remember, we talked about this. Farmers are basically Democrats. Think Thomas Jefferson. Think agrarian movement. Jeffersonian Republican Party that eventually became the Democratic Party. Farmers are more into that, and they think more in the terms that they are the actual heirs of Thomas Jefferson, this agrarian culture that he tried to put in place. The Northern Alliance, after the failure of the Grange, they start thinking more of a third party. And this whole idea is, do you create a third party or do you stay a Democrat? Well, in 1890, 800 delegates from this Farmers Alliance, including nearly 100 black farmers, will meet in St. Louis to argue this. They would like to reform. They would like to reform politics. They would like to get regulation for a corporation. Knights of Labor were also here. And after this meeting, they decided to create their own party, the People's Party, or what has become known to us, the Populist Party. And here again is one of these wonderful, wonderful political cartoons. Here is this balloon of the platform of lunacy, it's called. And these are the cartoon characters of the various leaders of the populist movement. And you can see it's a patchwork balloon. The Farmers Alliance, Old Greenback Party, Knights of Labor Party, anarchist, communist, right? women's suffrage, Old Granger, Socialist, Free Silver, Prohibition Party, that's part of the temperance movement, and they patchwork this balloon together and it becomes the People's Party. Bah! I guess you could perhaps tell that this would not be a pro People's Party political cartoon, if, especially if it's called the Platform of Lunacy. But this thing will scare both the Democrats and the Republicans very shortly here. This becomes a major movement, especially in the West. Uh, Kansas becomes a, a major center of the Populist Party. James Weaver and Tom Watson are the first two big leaders. Weaver, a former Union general, he runs for president as a populist in 1892, and nearly one million individuals will vote for this party. They do win several seats in Congress, mostly in the House of Representatives, which really is a major accomplishment. They create this third party, and within two years, they begin to win seats in the House of Representatives. Perhaps one of the most famous of the leaders, though, is Mary Elizabeth Lease. She's known as the Kansas Cyclone. She was an author, a lecturer. Um, she was an activist. She was a suffragette. She took on the cause of the populace. She has a quote that is often attributed to her, but some historians wonder if she actually said this, but it's a pretty cool court, uh, quote, less corn and more hell. And think about that, less corn. She's calling on the farmers to stop growing food. We stop growing food. The capitalists, the politicians, they will come to their knees begging for us and listening to what we have for our demands. Well, you know, actually this will never happen. But it's a pretty good uh, idea. Uh, but Mary Elizabeth Lease, too bad she's born in the wrong decade. Uh, a woman who definitely could have run for president, but in her time period, uh, it, it wouldn't have happened. Well, at the same time, as this party is now out there, this populist party, this third party, this farmer agrarian party, the Democrats turn back to Grover the Good in 1892. We told you how uh, James Weaver ran for president in 92. Well, the Democrats are not going to listen to these farmers, and they're going to stick as Democrats. They're going to put their whole weight behind re-electing Grover Cleveland, and he 
beat Benjamin Harrison and the Republicans in 1892, which is basically round two. If you remember, Benjamin Harrison beat him in 1888. And everything is supposed to be good now. Grover the Good is back. Yay, Grover the Good. And then the worst of the worst economic panics of the entire 19th century hits. We've had several of these panics of the, of the 1800s. The first one was the Panic of 1819. Then you have the Panic of 1837, which is basically caused by Andrew Jackson destroying the Bank of the United States. He had a mild one in 1857 I never talked about under James Buchanan. Of course, the 1873 one, which becomes the uh, crime of 73. But now here comes the 1893 Panic. And it is really bad. We're going to talk a lot about this when we come back from our break. A hundred million dollars in gold reserve for the United States government fell to $45 million. This became a huge issue for the government. It looked there for a little while, the United States government might actually go bankrupt. Well, Jacob Coxey at this time period, a very wealthy uh, industrialist himself, but somebody who believed in the people, forms his army, uh, the Christian Army of the Commonwealth, as it was known, and marched on Washington in 1894. His demands was that Washington, the government, Congress, and the president create public works programs, that the government creates jobs to put people to work. This was lunacy in 1894. Of course, it became the norm in the 1930s when FDR becomes president during the Great Depression, and we get the New Deal. Yeah, but that's going to come in the 1930s. In 1894, no public work program. In fact, Cleveland will famously say that people support the government. Government does not support the people. And as a Democrat, he held strong to that particular belief. He is a completely different type of Democrat than FDR. And then later on throughout the 20th century, as we will see, the Pullman strike, we only talked briefly briefly about this in class. This is a very important moment as well. There are a lot of those major strikes we talked about with the, when we went over labor. This was the last of the big ones. Uh, Pullman, Illinois, this is a railroad strike. Eugene Debs tries to organize them. Grover Cleveland sends in the military. The reason for it he uses is constitutional. In the Constitution, it tells us that the United States government will make sure the mail is always delivered. Yes, I said the mail of all things. And that was the catalyst for sending in troops to actually shoot at American citizens. The mail must be delivered. Rain, sleet, snow, strikes, crazy socialists like Eugene Debs cannot stop the mail. And that's when Eugene Debs gets arrested for the first time. He, he'll get arrested a few more times as we probably already know. And it's in jail he becomes a socialist. Also, because it's so bad in this country economically, uh, you get the 1895 J.P. Morgan, the banker's banker, the most powerful man on the planet, without being invited, comes to Washington and basically bails out the federal government. He winds up giving a huge loan to the government. That's going to be something we're going to talk about a lot on the Monday we come back from winter break. All right, people. Well, there's your populist party. This sets this up now. What I'm trying to do is set up the stage for you, as you will, without giving away too much for you, that when we come back, this 1896 election is about to happen. The Democrats don't want Grover Cleveland. But do the Democrats want to join with the populace? Hmm? Maybe? Will the Republicans stop them? Will the Democrats win? Let's find out in two weeks. Two weeks, we'll be back. And we'll talk about this in class. The election of 1896. The populace and bimetallism and the Republicans, conservatism and gold. Which will lead to one of the greatest of all children's story of all time. The Wizard of Oz. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we'll talk about that when we come back from the break. Until then, please take a look at Henrietta for us, please. Please, please, please. Okay, maybe. Okay. If you want to, 625, 626 is the populist program. You can see what they were about. The election of 1896 and its aftermath. If you want to get a heads up as to what we're going to talk about in class, you may want to familiarize yourself with this particular picture. It's in your textbook. And this may or may not be on your test. I'm just saying it. You just, you, just, you know, you, you, you never know. All right, people. 
Peace. See you later. Bye-bye.